Okay, I told myself I was gonna shoot a lot more tech videos in my spare time, but obviously I got busy and I just don't have as much time on my hands for that, but today's special because it's actually the 10 year anniversary of the iPhone 4. It was announced back in 2010 by Steve Jobs and we've gone through so many different iPhones over the years. I've reviewed several of them. And to me, the iPhone 4 was the last industry defining iPhone and here's why. But before I get into that, I just want to talk a little bit about why it's still special for me. Well, first of all, it was the first iPhone I professionally reviewed. Um, I did a written review and also did a video review. And speaking about that video, that video actually generated a lot of views on YouTube. And to date, it's still my highest, most viewed video on YouTube. So reason number one has to be the retina display. There's no question about it. It set the bar high for everyone else and it was the highest resolution screen in a smartphone at the time. So the retina display in the iPhone 4 was a three and a half inch 640 by 960 IPS LCD panel that gave it a pixel density of 326 pixels per inch. And I was blown away because not only was it super detailed and sharp when I compared it against the iPhone 3GS, but some other high-end smartphones at the time had WVGA resolution, so this was better than that, and Apple set that standard. The second reason is that the iPhone 4 introduced to all of us this concept of video chatting with the help of FaceTime. Now, before the iPhone 4, there were video chatting services, Skype, for example, and if you were using an Android smartphone, you had services like Fring or Quick. I remember using them and they weren't really the best. They were kind of sluggish, poor latency issues, but FaceTime on the iPhone 4 definitely was game changing. It did require Wi-Fi, but I thought the performance was great. The audio was synced up perfectly so you could conduct normal conversations and there was no slowdown or lag whatsoever. And the best part is that it made it simple. And I think this is a key thing here because you didn't have to sign up for a new service. You just called the person using the phone app and that is it. And the last reason is that the iPhone 4 had an excellent camera and was the first time that an iPhone was a solid contender when it came to shooting photos and videos because before the iPhone 4, you had the original iPhone, the 3G, 3GS, and their cameras weren't the best. They didn't have a flash. They weren't really known for their cameras. The iPhone 4 changed that because it came with a five megapixel backside illuminated sensor. And that backside illuminated sensor is especially important because now for low light photography, it produced some really good images. Of course, images taken in daylight were always sharp and detailed, but low light had a step up. So it gave the iPhone 4 a more well-rounded performance. And it was actually also the first time we had a flash in an iPhone, surprisingly enough. And it also featured 720p video recording. And all of that just made the iPhone 4 not only a phone that could replace a point and shoot camera, and it would set the trend for the iPhone to really excel in the camera each and every time. And those are my thoughts about why the iPhone 4 was the last industry defining iPhone ever. You look at what has came out after that. You had the Plus models, you had the SE line, you had the 10, and then of course now the Pro. And they all seem very iterative from one another. There wasn't really a big leap. The iPhone 4 was a huge leap compared to the 3GS before it. And it, it really defined what a true premium smartphone was because it had the highest resolution screen. You had video chat, something new and different that people didn't experience before. And the camera was simply perfect. What more can I say about the phone? Besides the fact that it looked good too, had a nice stunning design with that glass front and back with that stainless steel band. It ran pretty quick with iOS 4 and Apple's A4 chip. It did have a micro SIM card, which I wasn't too, too pleased with, but everyone got used to it. Now we have nano SIMs and you got all that in a phone that cost you $200 on contract. So it really was an industry defining device. All right guys, so thanks for watching this video. Hopefully I'll do another type of video like this or maybe some sort of gadget, we'll find out, but stick around, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you later.